everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. We're here today to revisit an old video of mine and kind of refresh it, if you will. I have finally <laughs> finished reading all of the books that were featured in this video and today we're gonna go over that video together and I will tell you if my predictions were correct. And yes, this is my five-star prediction video that we're gonna be going back over and then redoing with this lovely pile of books right next to me. So let's just dive in, shall we? Hello everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my very first predictions video. I wanted to kind of do this the beginning of the year this year because I'm going to see if I, one, read all these books in 2020, that's the goal, um, and two, I didn't. <laughs> As I said, I just finished reading them, uh, but it is still only the very beginning of March, so I guess I kind of did read the majority of them in 2020, so that's good, at least we're, we're off to an okay start. <laughs> if my predictions were correct, um, so this is my five star predictions video and it was actually a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be to prepare for this because I was staring at my bookshelves for about 10 minutes just kind of going through the books and a lot of them struck me as I was like well I think I'm going to enjoy this but I don't think it's going to be a five star. Again, this happened to me again 100% as I was staring at my bookshelves, deciding on which books I thought were gonna be five stars. It is such a difficult, difficult choice to do, and I don't understand why. <laughs> like, why is it that when we look at our bookshelves, we can't automatically think like, oh, this is gonna be five stars. I just, I look at a lot of books and go, I'm gonna enjoy this a lot, but I don't think it's gonna be a five star. Why? I don't know. So without further ado, let's get into this video. I'm gonna start with this very first one simply because it is a sequel to a bunch of books that I have previously given five stars. And so that's the main reason why I'm going to give it five stars, or I'm going to predict that it's going to be a five star read, simply because the other three books that I've read by this author I had given five stars to. Uh, but this is the third book in the Queens of Renthia series by Sarah Beth Durst. All right, so my reasons for this book were entirely valid, and I remember finishing this book and not liking it as much of, as the other three. And I know that I didn't rate it five stars. I, I don't exactly remember what I did rate it, but it was not five stars because it wasn't as good as the first two books. But I did understand why Sarah Beth Durst ended her book series like that. Four and a half stars. So I mean, it was... <laughs> It was super close to that five-star mark. It just wasn't quite as good as the rest of them, but I still really enjoyed that one. The next book that I think is going to be five stars, simply because I have seen only good things about it, and it just seems like it is going to be a masterpiece, and that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. This is, from what I recall, is a Russian fantasy. All right, so this one I read for a video that I did last February, which was reading Booktube's favorites, and it was based for Reagan's favorite books, Reagan from Cruise Project, and I remember reading this and liking it, but I did not give it five stars. I gave it four stars. It was good, but I don't think it blew me away as much as I was expecting it to. There is that, but four stars is still really, really good. The next book is one that I have seen around on booktube and bookstagram and book twitter, um, especially because the second one came out I believe late last year, um, but there's only good things coming out of this book and I've heard that it is so deeply um, raw and just dark and I've heard so many different authors just gush about these book, this book specifically, so that is why I'm predicting it has five stars, because I know that books that will hit me emotionally and they're just like deep and more real books will get those five stars, um, and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is... Oh no! <laughs> 
yeah, this one, as I, I literally just finished it like last week, so there is that. But, okay, so this one was a really, really, really great book. But I only gave it a three and a half star for like my own personal feelings about it. Like I recognize that it is a brilliantly written book and I find it hard to pinpoint exactly for the most part what I don't know what clicked with me, but I think it has to do more with the fact that I didn't really like Rin as a character, not because of her addictive personality, but just some of the choices that she makes and the things that she says is so ruthless, which is great in a character, but I just didn't connect with her at all. I didn't really connect with anybody, now that I think about it, at all. But this is one of those books that I have this feeling that if I read it at a different time, it would have sat better with me and I would have liked it more. So I, as I was reading it, I was like, this is definitely a five star book, but like not for me. <laughs> so I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. So this was not a success. We've had no successes on this list so far, you guys. Now, the next one is, I'm predicting that it's going to be five stars. One, because I love this author's world building a lot. And two, because it is so big that if it's not five stars, I'm going to be really disappointed in giving it that amount of time. And that is the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Now, again, I've only heard good things about this series. Okay, we've got our first win, The Way of Kings. When I first read it, I gave it five stars. It was so epic and incredible. And I am actually rereading it right now through audiobook form. I did read it the original time in audiobook form. But the second go around, I'm enjoying it even more, if that's possible, because I understand a lot of what's going on now because I've already read it, right? And it's such a big tome and it's so chock full of world building and character stuff that I'm just like, <laughs> I had no idea what was going on in the original the first time that I read it, but this go around, it was so good. It, like, I'm loving it so much the second go around. So yes, this one was a five star. I predicted it correctly. It was fantastic. This next one is by a beloved author on booktube and bookstagram. I have only previously read three of her books, um, Dark Shed Magic and her two middle grades, but I'm predicting that Vicious is going to be a five-star read for me. I just adore the concept for this book. It is basically two kids, um, have so much potential or whatever and then they come out of jail 10 years later and they're basically villains I think. I'm not sure but I just love what V.E. Schwab does with her characters and what like type of stuff she explores. This is another one that I just finished recently and I also did not give this one five stars. <laughs> I gave it four stars. It didn't blow me away and become a new favorite like it has for so many people. I gave it four stars, which is still an incredible read for me, but I just, I don't know what it is. It just wasn't a favorite of mine. Like, my favorite V.E. Schwab book is A Conjuring of Light, and even that one I haven't given five stars to. It's a four and a half star for me. So I think, wait, that one might be five stars. I can't remember, but it, it's rare that I give a V.E. Schwab book five stars, which is hilarious because I have another one on my list coming up that I think is going to be five stars because it is so different from her other books and I'm thinking it's gonna be great. But this one specifically, Vicious. I love the concept, that still stands. It deals with extraordinaries and this like almost superhero power given to people and it deals with the more like the really gray area of heroes and villains like what really actually makes a hero if not just the decision that someone goes through that's like i am a hero does that actually make them a hero no <laughs> it makes them a person who thinks they're a hero you know it is such an interesting concept and it's so well done victoria schwab does like an incredible job with character studies and it was great but i will say that i found that like not a lot happened in this book that's one of the things that i noticed with her books is that i can go through it and not really pinpoint a structure to the book to the plot like a lot of books you can go through because i've studied plot structure through my own writing and you can pinpoint 
point, the inciting incident, the midpoint, the darkest moment, and then the end, like the, the way the ending unfolds. Like you couldn't pinpoint all those and all the nitpicky ones in between. But with her books, you really can't, and especially with this one because it goes back and forth between timelines and jumps like sometimes between perspectives and stuff. It is a great, great book, and I think everybody should read it because it's fabulous, but it just wasn't a new favorite of mine, so it's not a new five star for me. So, another one that has not become a five star for me. Ooh! <laughs> now, sticking with the, I guess most of these, not mm, all of these, are pretty hyped on um, booktube and the book internet sphere, uh, but we're just gonna continue on with that train because this next one, I think I'm, I'm a little iffy giving it a prediction of five stars, but I know we hit that if I'm in the right mood for this book and if I am just ready to devour this kind of world, this like 1920s New York with the creepiness and all of that, I think that The Diviners by Liva Bray will be a five star read. Again, I'm influencing my decision a lot from what other people on the internet have said about this because I've literally never heard a negative review. Yeah, this is another five star for me. It was so good. <laughs> this one just hit a sweet spot for me because it had the creepy factor that I was looking for around Halloween and October and all that. And also the magical factor and the like a little bit of a crime element to it because I love true crime, if you guys didn't know. I love true crime. I love documentaries on serial killers. So bringing in a like magical demon serial killer was just like another layer on this cake that I really, really enjoyed. And I cannot wait to read the rest of this series because this, this first book was just incredible. It wasn't a perfect book, but it was a five star. It became an easy new favorite of mine. So we got two for two guys. Two for like, I don't know how many this is. Two favorites on this list so far. Two five stars. Great. So this next one I have extremely high hopes for simply because it was Books and Lala's favorite book of 2019 and just the idea of it, it seems so up my alley. And this author um, has written books that people just adore. Um, her other series, I believe it's called the Wayward Children series, I'm just not completely interested in. I've heard too many bad things about it to really get into it, but this one, Middle Game, is just, as I said, Books and Lala's favorite book of 2019. I have to give it five stars in my predictions because it just seems like it's going to be so good and so different from what I've read. If you guys have been around on my channel for, for a hot second, you'll probably remember my internal struggle with Middle Game. <laughs> I didn't rate it for months and months and months and months after I read it. I didn't rate it. I didn't know what to rate it because back then I didn't have a rating system to throw it through. And I, like I do now, I have cop aisle. So middle game was not a five star for me. And for the longest time, I thought it was gonna be like a three star for me after I'd read it and let it sit for a while. But it was so good and so brilliantly well done and it hurt my brain that I was like, no, it's not a three star. And it stuck with me long enough. So I ended up giving it a four star. I don't know if that's exactly the right rating for it, but that's what I gave it. So. <laughs> This last book, again, took the internet by storm when it came out. Even before it came out, people were clamoring for arcs because she hadn't released a book since her previous one that is highly, highly loved. Um, but that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I am expecting to completely fall in love with this book. I'm expecting this to be on one of my on my favorite books of 2020, if not of all time list, um, which is why I'm slightly terrified to go into it because I don't want it to be disappointed. <laughs> well guys, we ended this video at least on a good note because as you guys know, The Starless Sea is my favorite book of all time. It is easily a five star. I need to reread it because I just, I miss being in that world. I miss it, I miss it, I miss it. And oh, it was so good. 
that book is everything that I want in a book wrapped into one. And I even went on a like a journey last year trying to find books that are like the Starless Sea because I needed that experience again and I couldn't find it. <laughs> I just, oh, I love it so much. It is so good. All right, now we begin the re-upping of my five star predictions. So I have a stack of books here that I'm gonna quickly go through and I will be revisiting them within the year. <laughs> Hopefully within the year, God. If I don't do this within the year, somebody yell at me. But I have seven books here that I'm predicting are going to be five stars for me for various reasons. So the first one we're gonna start with is a sequel to one that was a five star from the previous video. And that is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. Why is this gonna be a five star? Cause the first one was, and I just have a feeling that this is gonna be even better than the first one. It's a continuation of the Stormlight Archives and she's just as thick, she's just as chonky, she's just as epic. So I'm looking forward to this so much. It's actually why I'm rereading The Way of Kings right now to get into the Boards of Radiance because I read Way of Kings last year a little while ago and I don't really remember a whole lot of like the details that you're gonna need going into the sequel. So I'm rereading that one to thus dive into this one right after. So very excited to get into this. Five stars. It's gonna be five stars. I just know it, guys. It's gonna be five stars. <laughs> Continuing on the sequel train, the second one that I have here that I believe is going to be five stars is The Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen. This is because, guys, I'm actually putting a lot of faith in this book because we know on my channel that second books in series usually don't go over well with me. I usually have a bad time going into the second books because they're bridge books to me. So I'm putting a lot of faith on this book, but I loved The Merciful Crow so much. It was a surprising five star for me last year. And I'm just ready to dive into the sequel. And I'm hoping it's gonna be another five star for me. I'm hoping I'm gonna love it just as much. All right, getting away from sequels, we have, I'm gonna talk about the two authors on here that I mentioned in my previous video as well that were going to be five star predictions. And the first one is Sarah Beth Durst's The Bone Maker. This one I believe is going to be five stars for me because it just sounds incredible. A, I love Sarah Beth Durst's writing and her worlds that she creates. I have not read four of her books so far and I love them, especially her fantasy standalone that she did that was released last year, Race the Sands. It was so intriguing. This is another fantasy standalone and it also sounds like a D&D campaign, you guys. It is a quest narrative. It deals with necromantic magic. I am here for it. This is also kind of like the book Kings of the Wild, like it's a returning to an original adventuring party quest type of thing, like 25 years later. So I'm very excited about this one. And then yet another one is of course the Schwab. And if you couldn't guess from my description earlier, my prediction is that The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue is gonna be five stars for me. Because as I said earlier, it is going to be so different from her other books that she has written. And as I said, none of her books have really hit that five star mark for me. Or if they have, it's been just, just like Conjuring of Light, I think it might be four and a half, five stars. It's one of those two. I can't really remember exactly what I rated it when I read it, but The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I believe is going to be that five stars for me. Also because this kind of gives me the Starless Sea vibes and I'm really hoping that it is like that. Like it not like the Starless Sea in its storyline, just have that feeling of just being wrapped up in a world and it's like, I know a lot of people have said this is really slow and really like, metaphorical writing and all that kind of stuff, which I love. And I'm really looking forward to just sinking into this sometime soon. The last three are all authors that I have never mentioned before on this channel, maybe? Well, two of them for sure are books that I have not mentioned on this channel. And one of them, I believe I did mention in that Starless Sea video as well. And that book is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. This one I am predicting to be five stars for two reasons. One, because it is about books and I love books about books. I just love it. Two, it, my, one of my friends, it's, it's her favorite book ever. So 
those are the two main reasons that I'm gonna that I have really high hopes in this. Another main like another kind of sub reason is that it's like historical fiction and as I said deals with books and it's a little bit of a mystery and I've heard it's absolutely beautiful so I am just all kinds of excited to dive into this one. I've also heard that this is a very fall type of book that so I am just ready. I'm just ready for the vibes that this book is gonna give me. All right the next one is one that I'm on the fence about. I've looked at it and I was like yeah that seems like it could be five stars if it's done really well. It is a younger YA book if I remember correctly and I found it at a thrift store but it's also a book that I've had on my radar for a while because my friend absolutely loves it as well. It's not, I don't think it's one of her favorite books but she says that it's just fantastic in the way that it's written. That is Here There Be Dragons or the first book in the Chronicles of the Imaginarium, that's a really hard script to read, Imaginarium Geographica by James A. Owen. This just seems like it's gonna be a great time. It's got dragons in it, and it's also London, and I think it's around the First World War. Yeah, so it's also historical fantasy, which we know I love on this channel, so I'm predicting this is gonna be five stars. And the last one, my friends, the last book that I'm predicting is gonna be five stars for me, is also one that I am really mainly just basing this off the fact that one of my friends really loves it, and it's been her favorite book that she's read so far this year. And just from that alone, I have high hopes in it. <laughs> and also the fact that it just sounds wonderfully weird and magical. And I'm very excited to give it a try. It's got like a magical twist to it, but it's a little bit more literary, I do believe. And also potentially a little bit more sci-fi. Not entirely sure, but it's The Centaur's Wife by Amanda Leduc. A little blurb on the front says, an exquisite magical world perfectly rendered for a dark and wonderful story. It sounds great. It sounds great, honestly. But at the bottom here of the little thing that it describes, it says Amanda Leduc's brilliant novel woven with fairy tales of her own devising and replete with both catastrophe and magic is a fable for our uncertain times, a vision of what happens when we ignore the natural world and the darker parts of our own natures. I'm so into this. I am so into this, but yes. Okay, that is my updated five star predictions, my friends. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give me a like and let me know that you want to see another updated version of this. And whether or not you have done something like this before. Have you predicted that you'll love a book and give it five stars and been disappointed? Or have you predicted something and been very correct? Let me know down below. Leave a little comment for me to respond to down below because I love doing that. But yes, my friends, thank you so, so much for watching and I will catch you in another video soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.